Wow, can you believe it's already Sunday again? It's just so crazy how quickly the time now goes by. But I hope you guys now had an amazing week and that you are now ready for another great time with me and also guys in the presence of God. So let's quickly close our eyes so we can open out today's lesson in prayer and then we can get ready to praise and worship God. So let's close our eyes. Thank you, Lord, that we can all come together again today and just have a great time in your presence as we learn more about you. May we experience you today in a special way as we just sing praises to you. We just want to say that we love you so much. And we all say, Amen. So, okay, everyone, you probably know now what time it is. So, let's quickly get up so we can get our praise on for God. But now, if you are now watching on your phone, please, guys, remember now to put it on widescreen and again something so your hands cannot be free and you can stand. Because, I mean, we can't praise God and dance for Him while we're sitting on the couch. No, we can't. So, quickly get up and do that and let's enjoy this time together with God.
you, Jesus, for your presence here with us. We just enjoy singing praises to you so much. You are just so amazing, Lord, and we really just love being with you and spending some time with you. Please help us today as we get into our lesson. Please help us to focus on you and learn exactly what you want to teach us in today's lesson. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sure, guys, I just had such a great time now in God's presence. It's just so amazing how praising God can just take all your worries away and just make you feel so much better and also so much closer to Him. But I would just want to say, if you are new here, to Father's Heart Kids, then you are so welcome and I know that you're just going to have a great time here with us today. So just to catch everyone up, especially now if you are new, let's quickly recap on what we learned and talked about last week. So last week we talked about Jacob and his brother Esau and how they met up again after some years that went by. Because remember, Jacob went to live with his uncle for some years because do you guys remember what happened? He did something really, really bad. But don't worry, we're not going to go through the whole family drama again of why Jacob ended up there. As do you guys remember, we talked about it a lot in last week's lesson. But if you did miss out or maybe you knew, you can always go back and find out what happened in those lessons. So you actually need to watch the two previous lessons to know the entire story that ties in with today's story. And you guys, you can find this either on our Facebook page or you can go on YouTube. And all you have to do is just search for Father's Heart Kids. But let me give you a short version of what we talked now about last week so you're not completely lost. Okay, so remember Jacob was living at his uncle, uncle's home for many years and many years passed. And this is now when God called him to go back to his hometown. And this is where he was born. So Jacob was actually very scared because he didn't know what to expect, especially if he saw his brother again. Because do you guys remember, he thought that his brother Esau might still be angry with him and maybe still want to hurt, hurt him. So he was very scared. But thankfully, our story had such a happy ending and nobody got hurt. And do you guys remember, although Esau was angry at his brother because of what happened and all those things that he did to him years and years ago, he worked through it and he let go of it. He actually forgave his brother Jacob and when he saw him again, he was so happy to see him and he went to go give him a hug and that was so special. So in this story of last week, we learned that we should protect our hearts from anger. Do you guys remember that? We had this heart. So Esau, remember, first wanted to kill his brother Jacob because his heart got a bit dark. He let anger get a hold of his heart. We learned that getting angry wasn't the problem because, guys, it's natural to get angry when somebody hurts you, right? Yes, it is. But we did see that it's what we do with the anger that makes the big difference. And that is why we should never let it now get to our hearts. Okay. So we need to deal with our anger and we shouldn't act out. Okay. We should rather now think before we act and we should just take a breather, calm down so that the anger doesn't get to our hearts. So can you guys remember the poem that we now learned last week to help us to do exactly that? Okay, so if you do, I want you guys, if you now remember it, to say it with me. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Okay, let's say it together. One, two, three, four, five. I'm waiting till my anger dies. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I'm still mad, I'll count again. <laughs> Well done, guys. Remember to always take a breather and say this poem to yourself as soon as you now feel like you're getting angry. It will give you some time to think before you just do something or say something bad. So another thing that we also learned last week was that we should always forgive. Because forgiveness is such a powerful thing and it can help us to protect our hearts or it can help us to clear them up if we maybe allowed anger to get into our hearts. And guys, we learned that Jesus himself said we need to forgive 70 times 7 times. 
And not because we should calculate it and only forgive that many times, but to let us know that it's so important to keep forgiving people and to be quick to forgive. Remember guys, forgiveness doesn't make the other person right. Okay, Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he forgave us and he forgives us actually all the time. So if God can do it for us, we can also do it because he asks us to do it. So now for today's story. We are talking about Jacob's son today. Remember I told you guys that Jacob lived at his uncle's house for many years. And in those years guys, he got married and he had many children, especially boys. He had a lot of boys. So we are going to talk about Jacob's youngest son and his name is Joseph. So we're going to talk about Joseph for the next three weeks or so. So make sure not to miss out on a lesson as his story is actually so inspiring. And guys, we can learn a lot from him. So today's story is called Joseph's Colorful Robe. And guys, this is based now on Genesis 37. So let's jump right into our story of today. Joseph's Colorful Robe Genesis 37 Joseph was one of Jacob's 12 sons. Jacob loved him more than all his other sons. Jacob made Joseph a colorful robe. His brothers were jealous. They wanted nice robes too. And they wanted to be loved as much as Joseph was loved. Joseph had a dream. He told his family, We were bundling grain from the field. Your bundles of grain bowed down to mine. Then Joseph had another dream. He said, This time the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. His father asked, Does this mean our family will bow down to you someday? The brothers were even more angry. They threw Joseph into a dry well. Along came some traders. The brothers sold Joseph to them as a slave. They lied to their father and said Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. But God was with Joseph. Okay, okay, I know I said his story is going to be inspiring and this doesn't sound very inspiring and it also doesn't sound like a very happy ending. But guys, I promise over the next two weeks as we now carry on with his story, you guys will see why I said that his story is so inspiring. So this is not actually only the beginning of his story and there's no reason to worry because guys, God was with Joseph. So he is in very, very good hands. So let's now look at what we can learn from this part of the story of Joseph's life and what his brothers did to him. So the first thing that I want to point out is actually quite an obvious one. Can you guys guess what it now might be? It's jealousy, guys. This whole story got very upside down because of jealousy. This is now the second time in Gen Genesis that we see that jealousy is in action and what it can do to people. So I think we should definitely now start taking note and put this lesson into action and not be jealous. Now guys, I know it wasn't fair that his father had a favorite. It's never nice if parents have favorites because it always hurts someone. I can understand why his brothers now felt the way they did. Because wouldn't you be upset if your brother or maybe your sister got treated better than you and they were more loved? Yes, I'm sure you would feel hurt and you would get upset. But we learned we need to protect our hearts from anger, remember? But jealousy, guys, is definitely another thing we need to protect our hearts from, okay? You see, Joseph's brothers allowed jealousy to get into their hearts. And they did a very bad thing because of this. So don't let jealousy get into your heart. And let's see what they actually did because jealousy got into their hearts. Guys, they sold their own brother as a slave. And slaves were treated very badly back then. And guys, to top it off, 
They went back to their father Jacob and they told him that Joseph was killed. Can you guys imagine what Jacob was going through at that moment? A lot. So you guys see, jealousy made them not just to hurt their brother, but even their father as well. So here's another family that's now torn apart because of jealousy. So do you guys remember our verse about jealousy when we learned about Jacob's story and how he tricked his father as he wanted actually the blessing of God that belonged to his brother? Do you guys remember it? Okay, let me remind you of it again if you maybe don't remember. So it's in James 3 verse 16. Whenever people are jealous or selfish, they cause trouble and do all sorts of cruel things. That's so true. We should never let jealousy get to our hearts and allow it to grow. Otherwise, we will do bad things and we will hurt people. And we don't want to do that now, do we guys? No, we don't. But okay, I know it's a lot easier to say don't get jealous. But how do we actually not let jealousy get into our hearts? Well, we have to learn to be happy and celebrate when other people, especially our family and friends, get things we don't have or get something we would like to have. If someone you know now maybe gets something you would love to have, like perhaps like a new pair of shoes or a new phone or a colorful robe, like in the case of Joseph, you should not be jealous, guys, and you shouldn't wish that you got it instead of them. You should rather congratulate them and be happy for them. And then you should also be thankful for what you have. Because who knows, there might be something that you have that someone else wishes they had. We certainly wouldn't want someone to be jealous of what we have now, do we? I don't think we want that. And we also certainly wouldn't want them to hurt us or do something bad to us because they want what we have. No, we certainly don't want that. Guys, just imagine getting something and you are so excited to get this amazing gift and then someone is not happy for you. That would not be nice, right? No, it wouldn't be nice. So then guys, why do we then sometimes do this to others? We should really be careful of jealousy because guys, it happens so quickly. So immediately being happy for others and being thankful for what you have will definitely help us to keep jealousy out of our hearts. So the next thing that I want us not to take note of our story is the dreams Joseph had. God gave him now something we call a prophetic dream. So guys, prophetic dreams aren't just dreams where you have a dream about this random stuff because you ate way too much pizza the previous night. Guys, a prophetic dream is where God actually speaks to you in a dream and he shows you things that he wants to reveal to you. How cool is that? I think it's so exciting. So guys, it's actually basically uh, like the one that Jacob had in our story from two weeks ago. But this time God was giving Joseph a vision of what would happen in the future. And this just shows to us once again, God speaks to us. So we will see in our next few lessons what these dreams actually mean and how they actually unfold in Joseph's life. So you need to be part of those lessons. Okay. So the next thing that I want you guys now to learn from our story is that you are never too young to make a difference. You see, Joseph was the youngest brother. He was so passionate about God, about what God showed him, and he just wanted to share with his family. I mean, who wouldn't want to share these amazing dreams God gave you with your family? But guys, unfortunately, his family wasn't so excited as Joseph was about the dreams he had. But that didn't stop him from sharing it with them. Remember, his father even asked him, Does your dream now mean that we will all bow to you one day? I think this is maybe why they got jealous. Because no one wants to serve someone who is younger than you. But guys, if God chooses that person, who are we to argue and not be happy? And I want to tell you guys today that God has a special calling for each one of you today. God doesn't care how old you are. He chooses you. And if you are willing, guys, then no one can stop you. So we should never think that we are too young to do something for God. Okay. 
And did you know that you can pray for someone even if they are older than you? You guys can definitely do that. And you can also teach them about Jesus and you can lead them to the Lord. You don't have to be a grown-up to do God's words, uh, God's work, guys. Here is now our memory verse of today that now confirms just that what I told you guys. Okay, so read it with me. It's in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. You see guys, sometimes we might love and believe in Jesus and learn these amazing things about Him. And we really want to share it with our friends and family. But we might feel that we are too young or too small to now really make a difference in someone's life. Especially if they are older than us. But guys, I want you guys to remember, no matter how young you are, you can always make a difference in someone's life. So sometimes it's just by maybe saying a prayer for them or telling them that Jesus loves them or just sharing a lesson that you've learned now here at Father's Heart Kids with them. And guys, they might not always respond in a good way, okay? like Joseph's brothers. But guys, don't let that ever stop you because God chose you. So who are they now to disagree with you? Amen? Awesome. Well, guys. So these lessons just honestly get better and better every week. But we have to remember now to apply these lessons to our lives. It doesn't help we just learn about them and just hear about them. We need to actually apply them to our lives and do what these lessons tell us. So let's put our lessons into action. Is that a deal? Awesome. So now we can come to the part of the lesson where we can just let our creativity flow and be creative and have lots of fun. So let me show you guys what our craft will be that we're going to make for today's lesson to remind you all of the amazing story that we learned and the lessons that we learned from today. So guys, this is the craft that we are going to make for today. And this is how your page is going to look once you downloaded it. It's just going to be one A4 page. So let's start with the craft. So mine is now ready in color just to save some time because it's going to take way too long if you have to watch teacher color in. So I'm just here to show you guys what the craft is. So first we're going to take our scissors and we are going to cut out this block. So it's very important that we cut out this block so our craft will work. So don't forget to cut it out or else it's not going to work 100%. And if you're a bit too small to cut out precisely on the lines, maybe you can ask a grown-up to help you with that, okay? There we go. Okay, and then we can put our papers aside. And then the next thing that we need to do is we, of course, need to write our name nice and big. So when we send in our crafts, we know whose craft is whose. So there we go, nice and big. There we can write our name. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our page and we're simply going to fold it in half. Okay, easy enough. So let's fold it in half. And this is why you need to cut it out so it works precisely because maybe your printer doesn't print it 100% in the middle. Okay, so there we go. And then it's going to look something like this. And then we're going to once again fold it in half again. And guys, you know what we have here now? We have like a little booklet. Okay, let's see what our booklet is. It says here, Joseph's colorful robe. And that's what's the story that we read. And we, it says here, guard your heart against jealousy. And that's one of the biggest things that we learned in today's story. And here you can see here's Joseph and his colorful robe. And this is the exact character that was from our Bible story of today. So once you now open it, your little booklet, it's going to say here, I'm thankful for... And this is where the fun is going to begin. Because remember, this is how we can guard our hearts from jealousy. 
is to be thankful. So we are going to take different colors and you guys can do it as however you want and just make it colorful and creative. So you are going to write all the things down here that you're grateful for and thankful for. So let me help you think of a few things. So number one, teacher is very thankful for her husband. Okay. I love my husband so, so much and I don't know what I would do without him. So I'm thankful for my husband. Okay. Let's think of another thing. I am so grateful and thankful that I have a car because it's nice to have a car because then I can get to places quickly. Okay, and I am thankful for my family and my friends. Okay, so then I'm going to write here my family and friends. Okay. I am also thankful, guys. Honestly, I'm so thankful for you guys. So I'm going to write here I am thankful for if H kids and that's you guys I'm so happy to be your teacher and to teach you guys the word of God okay let me think of some other things I'm also so thankful for my cute dogs guys I have two cute little dogs two pugs and I'm so thankful for them they make me so happy and they're always excited to see me guys also I am thankful that I have food every night to eat i never go hungry thankfully so i'm so thankful that i have food and also guys i have a home to live in and a warm bed so i have a home so that's just a few things that i am grateful for but we there's actually a lot more that i can think of i mean i'm thankful that i have all these nice colors to write in I have so many things to be thankful for, but th this is just a few examples to get you guys started. So now, yeah, you guys need to write your own things that you are thankful for. And maybe you can draw pictures or little flowers and make it however you guys want to make this page. Okay, and at the back of the booklet, we obviously have our name. And then we have a verse here that tied in with our lesson that says, James 3 verse 16. When pe whenever people are jealous or selfish, they cause trouble and do all sorts of cruel things. And that's what we learned. And remember, how we're going to beat this is not to become jealous, is to always be thankful and remember the things that we are thankful for. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy making this booklet and I can't wait to see all the things that you guys are thankful for. Oh, that craft is just going to be so much fun. I hope you guys will enjoy it just as much as I did. So please don't forget to send me in your pictures of your craft so I can show everyone watching how amazing you do at your crafts. So remember, there's no rush guys. You have the entire week to do your craft. But please remember to send it in to me before Friday afternoon so I can add it now to the slideshow. So if you want to send it in, you can maybe send me a WhatsApp or you can leave it in the comments on Facebook. But let's quickly have a look at the crafts that I got now from last week's lesson. I just love seeing how creative you guys are. You all really surprised me this week with your crafts. You guys are so talented. I just love what you guys did with your crafts and how creative you got with them. So well done guys and please keep up the amazing work.
So guys, unfortunately, it's almost time to say our goodbyes. But before we get soppy, because our lesson is almost over, let's get up and jump and sing and dance for Jesus. Because guys, that's the best way to end our lesson. So quickly now, get up and let's give our everything in these last few songs for Jesus. So simple, faith like a child. I give you an inch and you take me a mile. I feel the wind rush and the thunder roll. A two feet on the water, only one way to go. Yeah. I don't gotta be afraid no more, no. cause I know you up through the storm. I'm more than just a talk, I'm a, 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 I'm a,
What did we learn today? Today we read the story of Joseph's colorful robe. The story was based on Genesis 37. From his story, we learned that we must not only protect our hearts from anger, but also from jealousy. We can protect our hearts from jealousy by being happy when other people get things, especially when it's something that we really wanted. Another way to protect our hearts is by being grateful for all that we have. We also learned that God wants to speak to us and He can do this through prophetic dreams like with Joseph. And lastly, we learned that we are never too young to make a difference. You do not have to be an adult to do God's work. You can already begin to make a difference for Him now. Wow guys, I really had such a great time with you all today and it was just so much fun just reading our Bible stories of today and learning some new things from God's Word. Now please remember to guard your hearts against jealousy and anger and never ever forget that you are never too young to make a difference for God. Oh, and guys, I just want to tell you all that you guys are so special and guys, please never forget that, okay? So let's close our eyes so I can pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for our Bible story of today and the lesson we could learn from it. Help us to guard our hearts against jealousy and to fight it off with thankfulness. Help us to rejoice and celebrate when others get things that we really want. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to be bold and never doubt that we can make a difference for you. Use us to make a big difference in this world thank you lord for everything in jesus name and we all say amen so okay everyone that's not all for today and i hope you all had an amazing time here with us so see you guys now in the week when we do our mini moments bye everyone